Welcome to another episode of This Is My Architecture. I'm Rob, and with me today is Chris from Toyota Racing Development. Now, I can guess what racing development means, but please give us a, give us a hint of what you guys do. So Toyota Racing Development is a Toyota affiliate that's responsible for motorsports in North America. And essentially, we're an engineering-focused organization that helps our race teams win races by providing engineering solutions. Software is one of them. Fantastic. Well, we're excited to hear about how AWS helps you win races, so please, Give us uh, a breakdown of what we see on the board here. So what we're going to be talking about today is, a, is an architecture that allows us to take kind of these disparate data sets that are important to the race, but are from different sources, different locations, and are in a different format. And interleaving them and delivering them and doing some calculations on them, but then ultimately delivering them to our users uh, in different parts of the world. Um, we're also dealing with this architecture with um, some data consistency problems. So if your data goes down, what do you do to recover as well as your systems in the mm -hmm. middle? Okay, so raw data is coming in from what kind of sources? Absolutely, so we have data coming into an EC2, and it's gonna be coming from places like uh, maybe the vehicle itself, lap times, um, you're gonna have some weather data, you're gonna have uh, different sets of data, maybe from a race shop, come in from all different locations, different formats, um, and they also have uh, uh, different speeds at which they come in. When they come into the EC2, uh, we do one thing with them right away, we actually publish a quick little list of DynamoDB that other applications hang off of. So data's coming in, what's it doing with it? So after it aggregates the data, it's, it's kicking it off to Kinesis, which we are using as our, as our streaming service, and Kinesis is doing two things with it. First thing it's doing is it's sending it, it's triggering a Lambda, which is then sending that data packaged up uh, to an S3 bucket. The other thing the Kinesis stream is doing is it's providing that data to an EC2 instance that runs a node application that we call the Arbiter. The Arbiter is where all of our calculations happen, our inferred statistics, our modeling, everything like that. Okay, so same raw data coming into Kinesis, being teed off to two places. Lambda storing it for you in S3 later, and the other direction is into Arbiter itself. Correct. So what happens uh, with the data that actually goes to S3? So the data that goes into S3 is just stored for a number of different things later. We can run modeling on it, we can recover with it, we can, we can basically do whatever we want with it, it is S3. Okay, so that's a freeze frame of race data before you've done any kind of manipulation or enhancement of it. Correct, in the order that it came in. Excellent, okay. So what actually happens in, in this arbiter? So the arbiter is where we're gonna be taking that data, uh, doing a bunch of inferred statistics or calculations. How far is it to the car in front of me, to the car behind me? How many tires have my competitors taken? How many tires do, do, do I need to take? That type of thing. Running different models. Uh, and then in the Arbiter, we're doing, we're doing two things with the data. Uh, we're, we're taking a state of that data <clears throat> and storing it in Elasticash really quickly, as close to real time as we can. The point of that being, if we lose an Arbiter EC2 in this process, we need to be able to recover that data and recover that state of the Arbiter and continue on. And the other thing the Arbiter is doing with the data is sending it out to another Kinesis stream on the other side, which is triggering another Lambda, very similar to the one before, right. and it is again putting it into S3. Uh, what we're doing, with, the only thing different here that we're doing is the Lambda is just consuming and, and pushing along more data as we've created a lot more data inside of the Arbiter at this point. Right, so you've got a before and after freeze frame of your race data so that you can use it for both failure recovery and for future modeling and, and learning, I imagine. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. We're also using the data for live modeling. So S3 is a, lot, a little bit of a higher speed read cache for us, right? So we can take that data, run modeling on a specific set of data and, and run a decision tree. So if the yellow flag flies, you kind of have to have these decision trees ready for the crew chiefs so that if they need to make a decision, they can do it in a split second because that's when they need to make the decision in real life. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly running kind of um, simulations would, would be the right word on, on data so that if this happens, if that happens, uh, what does the outlook look like for our, our race cars? Fantastic. And then you know, from the kinesis on to the race teams, what, what's the last step in the picture? The last step in the picture is data is going to come out of the Arbiter into MongoDB, which goes into our application stack and is eventually delivered to uh, race engineers at the track, race engineers off the track, um, and ultimately serves our drivers. But what this architecture allows us to do uh, is take these disparate data sets that we had in the beginning, interleave them, provide something meaningful to our engineers in different parts of the world at the same time, so that the guy who is sitting in the uh, office or the woman that's sitting at the track is looking at the exact same tool set so give us an idea, like end to end, from when the, when the raw data comes in to the people who are actually making decisions on it. What, what are we looking at? 
a matter of seconds? Like ah, good question. So essentially, as a car passes the start-finish line, we expect the calculations to be updated and that data to arrive at the client within one and a half to two seconds. And we are, are, we're able to achieve that. That's awesome. Thank you very much for sharing your architecture, Chris. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.